Five News at 7.30. A new alert notification system in California, which is the first of its kind in the nation, will go into effect in January, designed to help law enforcement find missing black youth. And women as well. On October 8th, Governor Newsom signed a bill creating the Ebony Alert, which seeks to address racial disparities over missing person cases regarding young people of color. And joining us to talk about it is Shane Harris, founder of the People's Association of Justice Advocates. Thank you so much for being here in the Fox 5 studios. We're glad to See you. Always good to be Fox 5. So talk about the fi the factors that were triggered, you know, really for this to even happen. Why why do we need a separate Ebony alert? Well, you know, first of all, you know, I just want to say uh, that our thoughts and prayers go out to the folks uh, in Maine. Absolutely. Uh, it's just yeah. tragic what happened there. Um, you know, there are all children and families that, that go missing are important to me and many others, um, you know, it's important that we, we, we find people uh, that are missing, especially children and women that go missing. Um, so, so my heart you know, is certainly there. I think that the reason why many of us advocated for this is that people don't know that there's other alerts. The silver alert, um, which is for missing seniors. There's the blue alert uh, for law enforcement uh, that has been uh, gunned down or killed. Um, and so, you know, the Ebony Alert uh, really raises the, the flag on the disproportionate gap of black women and children that go missing. Um, yeah. Why not the, use the Amber Alert as the overall? Because that's, that's for missing pe persons in general. Yeah. Well, the, the Amber, Amber Alert, um, you know, in many cases has, has failed to sort of um, address this disproportionate population for a number of reasons, right? Um, in, in 2022, over 141,000 black children went missing um, and, and over 16,000 black women went missing. Um, and there were over 30,000 nationally black people that, that stayed missing uh, at the end of the year. So we're dealing with a disproportionate gap of you know, black people being considered runaways as opposed to missing, right? Mm -hmm. Identified the way that they're identified. That was one of the reasons why the law was so important. And overall, right, the work that you all do, right? The media and just sort of the publication of black children and women, um, you know, hasn't been as pertinent. So this sort of puts a pep in the step. I think we have a, yeah, alert. and I think we have a list of some of the criteria here. Here's, here it is. This, of mm -hmm. course, we're talking about the Ebony Alert was signed by Governor uh, Newsom. This is the purpose of it. And as you mentioned, just you know, look at this, 600,000 people go missing every year in the U.S., but then you talk about the missing black youth, as you mentioned there, Shane. I mean, it's, it's really just an awful situation. Hopefully this can address it. And we talked about all these alerts. There was even something I learned, feather alert mm -hmm. for indigenous people. I'd never heard about that. Yeah. I would imagine community leaders like you are hoping that, you know, this will help lower those figures that we're seeing. Absolutely. You know, and, 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 and as I said, all lives are, matter as far, as far as missing lives. I mean, we should do everything we can. Uh, but this disproportionate population um, in the African-American community, black women and black children, um, you know, this sort of, this Ebony Alert puts a pep in the step of law enforcement, media, publication, how we address missing black children and women. I think it's a great law. Uh, People's Association of Justice Advocates, my civil rights organization, was proud to support this, and a number of other civil rights organizations. Uh, Senator Steve Bradford out of uh, Los Angeles, good friend of mine, uh, brought it forth, and Governor Newsom, um, you know, assigned it. So I, I think it will put a pep in the step of trying to find more black women and children. And like I said, it's an expansion of the alert system, sure. right? We have already other alerts that are identified, so. There are factors, though, that affect uh, black children and black women, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's trafficking or things like that. Those are the things that actually triggered this whole Ebony Alert. Well, like I said, over 16,000 black women over age 21 went missing in 2022, right? And, 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 and I think one of the aspects of how black women are identified as runaways as opposed to missing, right? Sex trafficking, I've talked a lot about mm -hmm. what's going on in National City, the challenges around sex trafficking in our county. This is one of the hotbeds of sex trafficking federally and nationally. And I think that, you know, when we look at this issue of black women going missing and sort of the disproportionate sort of style in responding to those missing as opposed to uh, calling them runaways now they'll be identified as missing and really you know we'll, we'll 
you know, hopefully expand the opportunity to try to find, um, you know, most most of them or all of them. I mean, it's it's obviously something that we all think about. But sex trafficking is a form of of, of mi being of missing and being taken. Yeah. Um, and I think that you know this sort of puts a pep in the step and then the awareness and sort of the publication of how we respond to this. Uh, I think it's going to be a good law. So January first, this goes into effect. Local law enforcement will be, um, you know, uh, essentially ramping up efforts. This will go on the highway uh, boards when, you, when you're driving down the freeway, just like the Amber Alert and a number of other, um, you know, alert systems in the media will be encouraged, uh, you know, to, to bring attention to it. Yeah, absolutely. It. Long overdue. Absolutely. All right. All right, Chan Harris, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, a veteran who enlisted in the Navy during World War II looks back on his military service, and you'll find out tonight he's truly a hero. Veterans Voices.